Soon, it would be time to start working our way back south. For now, though, we would make the most of our time around such breathtaking scenery. Today we are hanging our laundry inside the boat because it was sunny this morning, but with all the hills, you never know when it's gonna rain here in Saco de Rivera. It's beautiful, but rainy, and uh, this is what we gotta do, so we made it work. <laughs> Welcome to Fort Ruka. <laughs> we took some Dyneema and we strung it up between our hand holds up here, and now it holds rows and rows and rows and rows of laundry. <laughs> what fun! The rain continued sporadically until a downpour came about later that night. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Kate here and we are enjoying one of these awesome rainforest showers here in Brazil. It's a great way to save water by getting a little cockpit shower. And as you can see, I've got a steady flow. It might not have the regular water pressure you're used to in your shower, but it still does the trick. <laughs> oh, refreshing. And a little bit chilly. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's raining this hard and how we collect water on the boat. It's very simple, but highly effective. Let me show you. We use some clean towels to get the water to collect off the deck, but we let the water run on the deck first before we open the tank so that it's nice and clean water that's going into our tanks. So yeah, that's how we collect water in these, these really rainy days. And it's extra nice if we can catch a shower while we're doing it. We also collect water from the canvas that goes across the cockpit from the bimini to the dodger. The water drips into the cockpit, usually leaving it soaked which is one reason why we are having panels made, so we can keep out the rain and cold when we get to Patagonia. Wow, guys, we are completely full on our five-gallon bucket. And, uh, you know, we're anchored outside of Uba Chuba, and they say it's called Uba Chuba, and Chuba is rain in Portuguese, so there is muito chuva right now. Lots of rain, but it is, it's actually pretty awesome. I'm glad the wind died down a little bit and it makes for a much more relaxing, comfortable, water collecting rain. You don't have to worry so much about the wind. Woo! So you can see there's a little bit of dirt and little pieces of salt and things like that. And it's getting some corrosion here on the autopilot arm and on um, the steering quadrant there. So we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup. Okay, today we are down here by the autopilot 
and the fuel tank and so there is a little bit of moisture in here and we've had a lot of stern slapping and I'm not sure where the water is. I couldn't figure out why the aft section of our boat was so salty. I remember something had hit our rudder on the crossing, but couldn't find any damage at the time. However, over time the damage would later come to reveal itself. <sighs> Alright, that's it for the, the cleaning, and maybe you can't see the difference, but I can, and the salt is no longer there, so it's keeping everything in good shape, and uh, that's it for cleaning today. We'll see what we find out next time. <laughs> Alright, time to take Roxy for a swim. <laughs> the sun is out, let's go do it. Okay. Rolling. Our dinghy is quite old, and even though we hoist it up on the davits every night to keep it out of the salt water, the pontoons were separating from the aluminum bottom. It took some strategery to make the repair. This is how you fix your dinghy on a beach in Brazil. We had a little bit of a leak. We've repaired him before. He's continued to separate over time here. I think it's a little bit of maybe corrosion or something like that on the aluminum or oxidation, and then the glue separates off. So, we just open these seams up a little bit, hit them with some sandpaper, and then we've been using some West Marine 5-Minute Epoxy G5 to take care of this, and the places that we have repaired have turned out pretty well and held for a long time. Okay, let's get the alcohol. Mix up some epoxy while that dries. Epoxy, my favorite part. The trick is we have to get this done before it rains and before the tide comes in. So the clock is ticking. <laughs> the last of the G5. Let's blend this guy up and start gooping him. ourselves to the dinghy for five minutes for it to cure. Oh, it's curing, it's getting hot. When five minute epoxy becomes one minute epoxy. It's a hot baby. Dean bore a chew to bites later, and we have the dinghy fix. Wherever you go in this world, there is always a J24. Everywhere. It says something about the old J boat, eh? Hey?
After taking down some laundry that was lucky enough to dry, we decided to celebrate a job well done by rewarding ourselves with a little beach time with Roxy. It's amazing the new things you find in your ever-changing backyard. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. I just wanna say it's going. that I feel okay. Go a little closer. Love is yeah. real. Maybe okay. we should hurry up and seal the deal. <laughs> The seamster Jacob messaged us that the canvas we had him make to cover our cockpit was completed and ready for pickup. They were such big fans of Roxy last time that we decided to bring her along too. We could also pick up our new fair lead. Things were looking up today. Oh, there. there you go. Oh, oh. Okay. Microphone. Oh. Okay, a microphone is in Ah, yes. Uh, we'll see you later. You will see the effect when you install this piece so that it catches some winds and it will go out with the break a damn branch. I'm sure you know otherwise you wouldn't have ordered it done. Yes. Thank you, brother. Obrigado. Two, two friends. Three friends. Amanhã, wow. <laughs> Lula. Over at the machinist shop, we were excited to see the fair lead as it was something we had been trying to replace for a while. Apparently, there had been some miscommunication because, upon requesting a replica of the one we brought in, the machinist assumed he needed to make one for the opposite side. Uh, so the good one, this one, okay. I took from back the back of the boat. Oh, and this shit. one goes on the front here. Okay. There's no problem. Some, some problems. <laughs> some problems. While the shape is going to be a little off aesthetically, it will at least be functional. We were ready to put it back on the boat.
On top of this, we also had him cut stainless steel tubes that would make larger, stronger triangles for our solar panel mounts off the stern. We left the shop in good spirits, ready to get to work, when we were soon entertained by the launching of a large powerboat. It's always fun to watch how different marinas do things. And now it's time to head back out to the boat in the dinghy, but pequeño problema. There's no water. <laughs> we can solve this. the boat after a little trip ashore we have our new canvas so we're gonna try these new side flaps that we had made out we're really excited hopefully they will keep out some of the rain and also some spray and wind we'll see how they fit we didn't go for a whole cockpit enclosure the reason is is that we actually never even wanted any type of cockpit closure or anything on the sides. We just wanted to go sail. But the more and more time that we spend on the boat at anchor to wait for things during the pandemic, the, the more we have to make the boat comfortable to live aboard as well, rather than just sail. The goal of these is to keep out rain. And they will also keep out a little bit of sun, keep our cockpit cooler, drier, and overall make our lives better. Should we put these on and see how they look? Let's do it. Okay, let me back in here. Looks like it fits pretty well up here. We originally wanted to go with a zipper or with some grommets up here to tie it in a little bit better, but we decided to do Velcro because, well, that's what's available down here. And uh, I think it's gonna hold up okay. You might look at this and say, well, it doesn't go down to the deck. It's not a full cockpit enclosure. And that's the thing, we didn't want a full cockpit enclosure. We still wanted to be able to sail with anything that we have up. So we made it just a little bit above here, so that way we can still have sheets on the winch and, and be able to sail like this. So in one configuration, it'll tie down right here, and we can use it as a spray guard if we're motoring. And then we can also tie it up here, and this will uh, allow airflow, but still help keep the rain out here in the tropics, which is pretty important. So let's tie this on here and see how it goes. I think it's a little longer than what I wanted. But. Wow, it's 10 degrees cooler already. Oh, the shade feels good.
since the new canvas was in place and ready for use from the bright sun or heavy rains. We installed the new Fairlead and replaced the old stainless tubes with the new longer ones for the solar mount. After all the hard work we had done in Saco da Hibera, it was finally time to celebrate with our new friends. So Jacob and his wife, Claudia, invited us to their family barbecue this afternoon and we're going to have some squid that he's super excited to make. He says it's super healthy and uh, we can't wait to go to shore and check it out. Let's go! Obrigada! Bem, bem vindo! <laughs> bom dia! Bom dia! It always feels so strange to be in a house after so much time on the boat, but we couldn't ask for a better day as we mimed our way through our basic Portuguese skills. After the tour of their beautiful home, Jacob explained that they built the house themselves. They had their own little slice of paradise. Plantação de abacaxi. Oh, pineapples. Ah, ah see, sí, see. Sí. Oh, ah, fruta. fruta. Oh! <laughs> Muito legal. With Curtis and Roxy fully relaxing, it was time for the cooking of the lula or the squid dish Jacob was preparing for this special day with family and friends. It's usually just the two of us eating together, so when we get to share a homemade dish with new friends, it's really something special. We finished off the meal with some acai sorbet, which is local to the Amazon in Brazil, before heading off to Sanunga Beach with Roxy and the gang. Jacob showed Curtis and I the freshwater shower before we ran into the salty ocean waves. We couldn't ask for a better way to finish off the day. We're at Sanunga Beach and we are gonna go hop in these world-class waves over here and we are with our new friends and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Yay! Come on, buddy. Ah, 
velocity. Uh, big waves! Back on Sweet Ruka, as the night fell, so did the rain, and we were able to test out our new canvas. And we couldn't be happier with our much drier cockpit. As our time in Saco da Hibera was coming to a close, we thought of all the wonderful people we met that welcomed us like family and helped us to accomplish our goals. This little town in Brazil would always hold a special place in our hearts. And now we were looking forward on heading south. Stay tuned next week as we finally get Sweet Ruga moving again. Don't forget to click subscribe! And a special thanks to all our patrons for making these videos possible. You too can join our crew by clicking the link at the top of your screen. See you next time!